What is up, ICP Squad? Welcome back to another episode of ICP Squad YouTube channel. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, as well as sign up to our newsletter at DefinityCommunity.com. Three of the best viewers are getting one ICP each, so let me know your best comment. Do you, did you like this video? Are you going to share it to your friends? What else did we miss? Today, we're going to talk about Web 3.0. So what is Web 3.0? We've all used traditional apps like Facebook and Instagram and other similar things, but what is the new generation of Web 3.0? Is it just hype or is it really something else? In order to fully understand Web 3.0, we must first understand what Web 1.0 and Web 2.0 are, and then from there, we can further explain Web 3.0. Let's start with Web 1.0. When the internet was first invented, it was used as a form of communication. Think of the original internet like a newsletter. Somebody posts something on the newsletter and then massive amounts of people all over the world can read said content. Think about Bill Gates' example of listening to a baseball game, but being able to listen to it repeatedly. On the internet or on some computer deal, they were going to broadcast a, a baseball game. You could listen to a baseball game on your computer. And I just thought to myself, does radio ring a bell? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just... there's, there's a difference. Now, he was made fun of during those days, but now the internet has expanded so much that many, many people enjoy sports and many other things on the palm of their hands on demand at any time. This is Web 1.0. Let's think of this analogy as a box. Within that box, outside users can see the contents and they can enjoy things like baseball games, cartoons, or any other thing. That's Web 1.0. Now, let's move on to Web 2.0. Web 2.0 is the development of user implementation into the server. That means that users upload things onto websites. This is the most common nowadays, for example, with websites like Facebook, MySpace, Instagram, TikTok, and all of those logging and news websites. Users can post their own content. On Facebook, somebody posts family picture, a picture of their car, et cetera, et cetera, while another user posts something completely different and each are separated. Nonetheless, they're all the property of Facebook and are all placed in this box. So back to the box analogy, Web 2.0 is a box in which users can not only see the contents of the box, but they can also add more contents to that box for other users to see. That is Web 2.0, read and write. Now, what is Web 3.0? What further action can we do other than reading and writing information? Is that not it? Is viewing and listening to things not it? Have we not reached the limit of the internet? The answer is no. On Web 3.0, you can own things on the internet. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, Victor, I already own things on the internet. For example, I own skins in Fortnite. I own digital downloadable content on Grand Theft Auto, et cetera, et cetera. The thing that separates Web 2.0 from Web 3.0 is that you can transfer said property from one place to another. So for example, your skins on Fortnite are not available for purchase or sell outside of Fortnite. You can't go to your friend and sell him your skin. Only Fortnite can do that. Intelligently so, they get to keep all the business. You can't, for example, transfer your content instantaneously from Facebook onto MySpace. That would be competition. You can, of course, transfer it to Instagram, but that's because it's the same company. So how do we fix this? On Web 2.0, Every single company has their own server. Now, this is oversimplified. They have many servers and backup servers in case of emergencies, etc. But for simplification purposes, each company has their own server and all of the data is kept in that server. Let's think of them again as boxes, a Facebook box, a MySpace box, TikTok box, YouTube and Google box. And each one of them competes against each other and wants the ownership in their own little box. On YouTube Premium, you can download the content but it's only available if you keep on paying the subscription. On Facebook, you can view your pictures, but you can't view those same pictures on another website unless you download them and upload them again or upload them to that website. But you can't just instantly view them from another website. The same thing goes for video content. Video that is on TikTok remains on TikTok and you can't put it somewhere else unless, of course, you download it and re-upload it to somewhere else. So how do we fix that issue where each website has their own box and they try to protect their information and keep it to themselves? We do this by making one large box and calling that Web 3.0. Now, that is where the internet computer comes in. 
the internet computer solves the problem of many multiple servers owned by many multiple owners and instead gives many multiple servers running under one protocol that is owned by separate people. So some of you may be thinking, well, Victor, if it's one big box, doesn't that mean one giant entity controls everything? These are some of the concerns from other YouTubers such as Coin Bureau. You could say that what the Definity Foundation's team is looking to do with the internet computer is not eliminate the tyranny of today's tech giants, but instead crown themselves as rulers of the internet. That is where the tokenization comes in. The internet computer protocol is one big box, but that one big box isn't just one server room. It's many different nodes ran by many different operators. As of the making of this video, there are approximately 1,200 different nodes, all of them ran by different people. On top of that, the ownership of the protocol doesn't belong to one single entity. It's tokenized under a DAO called the NNS. This system tokenizes the votes of the entire platform into the community. This makes it to where any token holder can have a say in the jurisdiction of the entire internet computer. So why is it important to have only one big box instead of many separate boxes? Doesn't that make it more decentralized? The issue there is that property cannot be transferred from one place to another if they own their own servers. They will restrict each other. They will not allow their APIs, etc., etc. On Web 3.0, all of the data and all of the digital content belongs to the owner, not to the company. Instead of uploading it to Facebook and having it belong to Facebook, on Web 3.0, your content belongs to yourself. Then there are many different websites that you can go on, and all of those websites allow you to see that content that is yours that you own. Think about it this way. Your data belongs to you and you can show it in whatever showroom you want to without your data belonging to that showroom. The showrooms being websites like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, etc. In this way, users can own all of their data and share it wherever they please. This is already going on with NFTs. You can purchase an NFT on the Entropo marketplace and then have that same NFT be viewed on, on an aggregator like DGastonia. You can also purchase an NFT on ICP Swap and then have it sold on Meme Cake, a different marketplace. Each asset is not tied to one single marketplace because all of the marketplaces run under one single protocol. So your assets are never tied to one single exchange or one single place. This can revolutionize the way cryptocurrency works when it comes to exchanges. And that is for a different video. And you can have your own wallets and then have aggregators or the term iCoin to interface exchange to where you can exchange your assets with other people in somewhat of a decentralized, decentralized exchange. Own wallets, own digital funds, exchanged only through code. That is the magic of the internet computer. Then that is how ICP, Definity, and the internet computer can make it possible. Web 3.0 is already here, guys. I'm very excited, and I hope to see you guys on the other side of Web 3.0.